Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to 2014, where I created a video to explain how I produced some images that were made by reading pixel data out of images and turning them into geometry that had, you know, uh, attributes that were associated with the color channels, basically. So um, that worked fine, it was pretty slow, um, and there was a lot of people enjoyed it, but there have been improvements to Blender, so we're going to update that script. Now, one thing that's interesting is actually these days, hello 2022, we would just use geometry nodes. And I will do that in a future video, but um, I think this is actually a wonderful way to get started doing creative coding in Blender because it's a pretty simple script and yet it's pretty powerful and lets you create some interesting shapes. Um, so I hope to get you all excited about that. Um, the script itself and links of to all these resources will be at the bottom of the video. The script itself is in this gist on GitHub. I updated it, so it was first put up here in 2014, but now, hello, 2022. Um, look at that, 2022. Okay, <clears throat> so there's a gist. Um, this is the sort of output uh, we're going to be trying to create. Um, that is uh, geometry that has been rendered or produced by sampling a texture, basically, an image file. And so these are the kind of, you know, cycles. God bless cycles. You can render anything in cycles. It'll look fantastic. So um, that's what this is. That's what we're going to make. Uh, we need to move along. Uh, I recommend, I'll put a link to the Blender documentation, Blender Python API documentation. Um, one nice thing to do if you're going to start using Python and Blender a lot is you're going to want to open Blender from its from the command line using the full path to the Blender executable. Um, it'll be something like this if you're a Mac user. I would imagine instead of Blender-31B, it'll be Blender.app, something like that. I, you know, you'll find it. Um, <clears throat> again, and you may actually want to create an alias if you're a Bash Seashell you know, user, just so you don't have to remember that full path. So in my case, I've created an alias called Blender. You, <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to just go ahead and paste that full path in. It will start Blender. There'll be some gobbledygook. Uh, here we go. Blender's opening. This is a beta version. Nice splash screen. We're all going to have different startup files. It's not going to look the same, probably. If you're just getting started with Blender, you're going to see something a little different at this point. Hopefully, though, <clears throat> you will see a collection manager, an outline view here somewhere in one of your panels. Um, you may or may not have a cube or some other stuff. Uh, we can just hide all that um, using the collection manager. Okay, but this isn't about that. We're just gonna go, we're gonna assume some knowledge here. We're gonna go straight to the scripting layout. So there's a custom scripting layout. <clears throat> it's got a lot of, it's a pretty sensible layout if you wanna get started. Um, the other thing I'm gonna recommend uh, first time Python scripters do is go ahead and turn on, this is in the Blender preferences, turn on Python tooltips, turn on developers extras. I think that's good. And that just <clears throat> will give you some affordances in the in the user interface that'll help you. I'm not gonna get into how or why right now, but <clears throat> you probably wanna turn those on long term. In the scripting layout, we have a world view, like a scene view, we've got uh, a Python interactive console that lets you try things out. <clears throat> and we've got the operations history. And this is handy because basically this is a copy and pasteable Blender code, uh, Python code that uses the Blender uh, Python interface uh, to manipulate the scene or manipulate objects in the scene. So anytime you do something in Blender, it will create a little snippet of Python that uh, represents how you would do that yourself um, from a Python program. So <clears throat> that's the main thing here. Um, the text editor view that we're in, currently empty. There's no text blocks in our project, so we'll make a new one. There may or may not be line numbers or syntax highlighting. I recommend you turn both those on if you can find it in the user interface. Okay, we're gonna create a thing called test.py. It can be called anything. This is our text blocks name, doesn't matter. But the notion of data blocks is something you're gonna to start to care about if you're doing Python work. Basically everything has 
<clears throat> a path to its data block. So everything, literally everything, has a way to talk to it uh, through Python. And if you see in this dark gray area, uh, it says basically the Python path, object path, you need to get that piece of data. <clears throat> Moving right along, we're going to copy and paste code from GitHub. So here's the gist, link in bottom. There's a button that says raw, which makes it easy for us to select all and copy and go back to Blender, go to our text block, paste it in. The very first thing we're going to want to do is get rid of the cube I made. <laughs> <clears throat> um, we're going to want to sort of like sanity check our script. So uh, don't recommend. Anyway, so yeah, so you gotta, you've got this copy pasted code. You want to maybe there's, we don't want to, I can't unfortunately. I really want to go into it. Not right now. We'll do it next time. Um, it's easy to read, I'm hoping. It's commented. Give it a shot. Give it a read. Um, very first thing you might want to do is uncomment line 86 by removing the hash marker in the front of the line. And that will let us test this make cube function, which is defined in this script to see if we can. This is just like a sanity check. Can we make a cube? Well, we made something. And trust me, that looks fine. We actually made two cubes, I want to note. A couple things to point out here. Um, this cube is a prototype cube. So the way this script works with some efficiency is it makes one object and then copies the mesh to all the other pixels. <clears throat> so it puts all the pixels in a collection called pixels and each object is named pixel and then there'll be some number marker after it. An interesting thing to notice is that uh, our pixel objects have a custom property called custom color. I'll show you. We do that right here. We assign a custom property to our custom color. The other thing to notice is that we will be using uh, and making a material called object color. So let's have a moment. We'll look at that. Uh, uh, yeah. So over here in the shading universe, we're going to take our pixel. We're going to look at it. It currently is using a material called object color. Object color is, however, real boring and not really defined and we actually want to use nodes. So let's click the use nodes button on our material that our pixel is using. Our pixel is using material called object color. We're going to edit that. We want to edit it so that it uses this custom property that the script built called custom color. The custom color property is the uh, RGBA, red, green, blue, alpha channels from the image we just sampled. So we sampled, oh, in this case, we actually didn't sample an image. We'll get there. Um, in our node tree for our material, we're going to add, this is important, we're going to add an input. It's an attribute input. Uh, it's a object type input. So let me just zoom in here. Um, if you want to slow that down, go ahead. We added an input attribute node. It's an object attribute. We're going to plug the value of that attribute into color. Currently, it's undefined. We want to make it be custom color. So let's just go ahead and type custom color here. Boom. Now what's going on is that uh, thing that we're calling the pixel, which uh, is this pink thing, is using values uh, red, green, blue, alpha to uh, as the input color for our material. So we can change. Uh, the color by sliding these object attribute values around. Pretty handy. I think that's a good tip in itself. There's maybe many reasons you want to do that. OK, moving on. Moving on. Um, we've got our script. We have our material. We What are we missing? We're missing our image. So um, I'm going to comment out line 86 again by putting the hash mark in front of it. We know this function works. Now we're going to go ahead and run it over some image. I'm going to go ahead and make a mistake here. I'm going to say I'm going to say this cubify method here is going to try to take some image and turn it into a bunch of these pixels. So let me just delete everything that we've done so far. And we're, let's try to run this. Okay, cubify test.png. I'm going to run it. Ah, oh, something happened. We got this Python script failed. Check the message in the system console. Also, it says it here, too. Also, I don't know. That cube is fine. It just happens to be red. All right, so what happened? Here's our console, and it says, 
a lot of gobbledygook. Some of this gobbledygook was when Blender was starting up and my setup is wrong. But the thing that matters here, key error, BPY, prop, blah, 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 test PNG not found. Okay, well, you know, we know why, right? We said to cubify an image and we don't have really a reference to test PNG anywhere. Who knows what that image is? This is not a path on your computer's uh, file system. This is a name of a data block. So since it's a name, let's go ahead and use a proper name like Alice. Okay, so we're gonna cubify Alice. We, over in UV editing, we have an image editor. This is the UV editing layout. We have an image editor. You could probably make image editors anywhere you want, but by default, they're here in the UV editing workspace. Uh, we don't have any image blocks other than one called render results. So we need to open an image that we're gonna use for our work. So I'm gonna use this one called test PNG. All right, it's a pretty boring image. I find boring images work great. Small images work really great when you're prototyping something. So here's test PNG opened in an image editor. And basically uh, it has a width and height of 50. It's a small image. So we have it as a uh, image data now. There's an image data block called test PNG. We want to call it Alice because we're being silly. Okay, so now we've got Alice. It's an image data block. Uh, we're talking about Alice over here. We've got another sneaky cube that's sneaked in. We've got this collection of pixels. We're going to delete that too. All right. You know what happened? Our script failed, but it did do some work. It created a collection for us. It created a default cube for us. And then it failed because it couldn't find Alice. We're going to run this now. We're going to find a picture called Alice. It's going to convert each uh, pixel into a, into a Blender object and put it in our scene. So here it is. Now they're all red. Why are they red? Huh, that's a real good question. That is a real good question. Did I break something? <laughs> ugh, ugh, with the demos. Okay, custom color. There, I don't know. I'm not sure. I think it's just the, um, the view mode I'm in. <clears throat> Yay, all right. <laughs> Yeah, so, so that just had to do with how I was uh, displaying things. There it is. So that looks a little bit ugly, but you can tell we've got a few things that are working great about this is we've got, um, sorry, I'm gonna just clean up a little. <clears throat> we have all of our pixels have been rendered as tall cubes, elongated rectangles. So I think I could stop there. Um, we could have some better lighting. We could render this in better ways. Um, feel free to quit. I'm going to go ahead and actually just fix this up a little bit. So you can uh, select all your objects in this collection, the pixels collection, and then scale it way down. Whoop, but don't invert it because that's confusing. So scale it way down. And then I guess, you know, really you would want to move it towards the origin where all the lights and goodies are. Maybe your camera's in the origin. That's or somewhere near the origin, not like, not a hundred meters away from the origin anyway. So <clears throat> there we go. And I'm gonna turn on my studio just so I can see things. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> All right, uh, let's see. Let's get this to be a reasonable size and put it on the floor so that we can actually take a picture of it. All right, now how's it look on the camera? Okay, medium. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> thanks for watching. I uh, hope you got something out of this. I Let me know if you would like a more slowed down, more detailed walkthrough of the code. I think the code's legible. Um, have fun with it. Don't be afraid to try things. One thing to try is, oh, how do we choose the color? Why don't you change the way we um, change the height, you know, based on a particular channel. In this case, I think we're using the saturation. You, you know, you can change the height based on the hue or the value. That's a good way to start. Okay, hope you have fun. Thank you.